if someone comes up tomorrow to you and asks you, what does or what can you think that the Catholic Church stands for or represents? And you begin to look up and down, left and right. Maybe you may not have an answer to that, but it simply stands for universal. That is the meaning. And wherever the Catholic Church is found, and it lacks that universal character that comes from God, that comes from Jesus, the church is the visible sign of Christ's presence in our world, the body of Christ. Wherever it lacks that character, that church needs to be reformed. Wherever it is, needs that church itself needs salvation. Now, when before Israel went into exile, there were a people unto themselves. They thought that salvation and God is their private God until they were sent into exile and they had an encounter with other people. And when they came back, they realized the universal nature of God's salvation. And that is why it was put up today, all nations we gather. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. No longer those who thought or those who think they are chosen. Salvation is no longer being belong, maybe belonging to a particular set of people or a race. Salvation is the gratuitous gift of God unto his people, all of us. Let's just look at the gospel of today, which is a very, a very striking drama. Jesus, after a long talk on the issue of clean and unclean, being ritually clean, being worthy of worship, and then he told his disciples and all those who were listening to him, what comes from outside doesn't make you unclean. It is what comes from inside, from the content of your heart that makes you unclean, unworthy of worship. Trying to break the barriers of maybe ritual clean, um, cleansing and the rest of them, he stepped forward geographically and went away from the region of the Jewish people and went further to Tyre and Sidon. The population there are what we consider as pagan, but not necessarily pagan, actually. <laughs> that is the name we give them, Gentiles, people who are without God. Okay. Gentiles in parentheses. But God himself, if we look back to in our history, God in a way has revealed himself to people of different race, of different color, different societies. Their understanding and interpretation of God's presence in their midst may be different from ours. That doesn't mean that they lack God in their life, no. God has been present in their midst. And then, out of the moon, this woman appeared when Jesus went across. And then this woman came over and said, Sir, have pity on me. Recognizing in Jesus the Jewish Messiah, and he's coming from a Gentile world. Remember, in um, St. John's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus encountered with a Samaritan woman. Another tribe. And this woman came over and said, Sir, have pity on me. And Jesus, pathetically, ignored her and never said a word to her. <laughs> what will you do? And you just walk away. <laughs> you just walk away. Oh, no, no. I'm not ready to put up with this rot. That, is, that will be the answer. I'm not ready to put up with this rot. I've begged you and you're doing nothing. I'm, I'm off. 
and then you go away. There is an adage in my place that a dog that has patience will eat the fattest meat. It holds true here. And then his disciples, not out of concern for this woman, but because they thought that this woman was disturbing them, shouted, give her what she wants, master, let's go. And Jesus told them, I have not come for them. I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Isn't that ridiculous? So you are ridiculing, but that was not the intention of Christ. He wanted his disciples and those who surround him to learn a lesson from this woman considered to be a pagan. And this woman is the one with her drama, the one to teach those who have thought they have the knowledge. And this woman came over again and knelt before Christ. This is one of the most drastic moments or significant moment in the biblical tradition. This woman coming to kneel before Christ, sir, I'm still here, have pity on me. And Jesus retorted, it is not good to take the food meant for the children to give it to the dogs. Not this type of dogs we have today, you know. These ones have even cabinet to sleep on. And they can sleep on our beds. Not that type of dog. Before you finish, finish cooking, your dog is already sal salivating. And your dog will have a pot of food before you begin to hack. Not that type of dog. The dog we are talking about is just a house dog, maybe a security dog that used to be out there. Maybe they come into the house when they are needed and they tell them, off, go away. That was the type of dog, not the one that used to sleep on our mattresses. And the woman looked at Jesus like, okay, sir. But I know if maybe the particles of the food, if it falls on the ground, the dog at least will be given an opportunity to pick that one. Give me that one. Give me the scraps. I need that. It will be enough for me. Patience. Being gentle pays off. Now, many of us would have walked away. The second one, we just, the third one, we were just like, oh, that ends it. But the woman was able to get what she wanted, what she requested for, because she was consistent and she was patient. And then, from there, we will learn that the salvation of God is universal. We put it this way, the scope, or the inclusive scope of God's plan of salvation that this woman is part of the God's plan for salvation. And Jesus turned around and said, you are a woman of great faith. Not just a woman of faith, great one. Let your wish be granted. And then the scripture said, and immediately her daughter was well again. And this woman here taught us what it means to belong to God's kingdom and what salvation means what it means to be patient, what it means to endure. In this woman, we see resilience. In this woman, we see a great faith that is not ready to give up at the first instance. What about you? What about myself? Are we ready to testify and tell people we are people of faith in Christ Jesus? That God's salvation is for everyone. We pray today that the grace of God will open our hearts to see God's plan, not only for us, for, for people everywhere in the world. Peace be with you.